Hey folks, how's it going? After a bit of a break post Guild War, it's time to get back on the grind. We are currently looking at a Dark Favorite Threat Barrage in December and a Fire Favorite Guild War in January. Early January at that, as if I'd be sober enough to go through it. While we get there, we've just gotten the new Siegfried Raid and the announcement for the Tales of Arcarum. These should be followed by the Christmas livestream and the usual Holiday Magnafest and Roulette starting on December 21st. That's quite a bit to unpack, so let's take it step by step. Siegfried High Level came out as a bit of a wet fart. I'm glad the raid itself is not as annoying as Mugen, but the weapon looks kind of meh. I guess it's ok for Magna Cain to replace the Yggdrasil sword since it brings majesty and awakenings on top of the Magna mod, but I doubt I will farm more than two. It looks like they really overshot it with the Schrodingers and they're trying to curse correct. One interesting aspect of the toothpick is the damage per turn it inflicts on your team. Since Earth doesn't have characters that play around it like Summer Kumbira does, maybe we're going to see some more passive slash countering damage dealers coming out in the future. When it comes to Tales of Arcarum, it looks like the event is just an extra excuse to farm Sandbox. On the bright side, it seems like it will come with extra rewards, faster box procs, more experience gains and a new guidebook to make up for the support summons. Having a Miltis weapon, or weapons, in the shop alongside Astras and Ideans is also a pretty nice perk. Hopefully it won't be locked just to the water ones as I'm still planning to go for King 5 star first. And speaking of Evoke 5 stars, we should be almost there for the first release date. If I remember correctly, they've promised they would let us know the required materials for the uncap beforehand and that should be any day now, unless they want to keep that for the Christmas stream. Tales of Arcarum also doesn't seem to come with any new materials, so I guess the Evoker 5 stars won't necessarily be tied to it like the Eternals are tied to the Guild Wars. For the Dread Barrage I honestly have very little to prepare. It's a pretty chill event, comparable to farming about 400 million honors during the Guild Wars, and I'm sure Lich and Fedil will see me through it safely. Coming out before the roulette means I won't be able to get a second pain and suffering in time, but it shouldn't be that big of a deal. The one weapon I might actually want to consider finishing is my second Agonize, but mainly to do Magna stuff. With the extra experience from Sandbox, hopefully 6 will hit 140 on time. What does scare me is the Fire Guild War. I don't have Grand Percival, which is already two big holes in my lineup, both from his tag team and his weapon, I have never gotten Summer Mimblemel, and I don't have Wilnas. This last one can potentially be replaced by Luffy for full auto and longer fights, but I would still very much like to have a free assassin available on turn 2 or after giving in double strike. To top things off, after buying my sunstone in the last guild war, I'm now 60 other pages away from being able to buy another blue paper, so even if I wanted to get Tien up to 150, she would have to wait until after the Dread Barrage, and I would only have the Holiday Magnafest to level her up. And speaking of holidays, we should be getting at least 3 new Christmas limited releases, with the first one coming out on November 30th. It looks like Dark hasn't gotten one since Rosetta back in 2014, while both Fire and Light got a release for 2 years in a row. If I had to guess, I would say we're getting a Dark, Wind and Water limited release this year, with the Rabbit Zodiac following closely. For one, I hope that Mahala or Makora actually turns out water, just to see her pair up with Aselia. So when it comes to fire characters, I just have to pray for Gatchap into Merciful and send Percival all willing us my way. For the weapons, it's another story. I still need to finish my second CA supplemental staff, I have a grand total of 0 Megan swords, plus I still need a decent fist main hand in case I can actually Lucia stuff. This should probably be the Ultima one, but I would need to stop procrastinating and actually decide which element to recraft these weapons in. The worst farm this month is likely going to be the Mugen Swords. Small normal attack and only 20k supplemental on crits are not much to write home about, while the Garrison is likely only going to be helpful to full auto or solo mash the Nightmare 200. It's a niche annoying weapon to get and if I just wanted the HP, Shiva Swords or Autumn Staffs on Defense Awakening could probably do the job. And speaking of Awakenings, Fire and Light still only have a single Proving Grounds weapon, and the event has been run in July, August and October. 
Hopefully we can get the water run in December, but who can say if it will just add a second weapon or a second weapon plus awakenings. Poor fire, neglected for so long. When it comes to the rest of the overall progression, I'm a bit over halfway there towards completing Kame and nearest weapons and domains. Some Eternal 140s ate a few meds, but hopefully Tales Over Carum will let me get back on track. For the Eternals, I'm up to 2150s, 3140s, and 2110s. Sadly, the maximum amount of Valor badges obtainable from Dread Barrage is only 240, so while I can double my stash, I won't be able to buy two more merits for two more uncaps. The choices here would be to bring either 6, TN, or Octo up to 150, or to start working on Song or Trio and get them up to 140 themselves. From 140 to 150, Six gets an extra new con dodge on top of the new 50k skill supplemental EMP. He's always been a great DPS and basically a must slot for almost any content. More end of turn damage would be great to get. Tien gets a 100k damage supplemented passive when Bounty is at level 10, but even with her charge attack resetting her first skill, that would still take a few turns to come into effect. The 50k supplemental damage EMP would give her another couple of millions for the Nightmare 95s at least. For the Nightmare 200s, I think we'll be locked onto spamming dispels as if they were raining, and we will likely need some AoE hits as well, since win bosses love Mirror Image. This means Anderson, Elmot, Medusa, or Wilnas will likely need to be in the team, but Elmot is the only one dispelling two buffs in a single turn there. When it comes to sustain, Athena is likely going to be a must-have due to her guard, damage cut, healing and blind, which only leaves one slot, and Tien is fighting over this against Christmas Nemone, who brings more healing and buffs, a second dispel or Luffy. Lastly, we have Octo, whose 150 brings a 100% debuff resistance and a dispel cancel for half a turn on any chain burst, as well as a 150k CA damage supplemental. The supplemental damage isn't that big of a deal, but if the debuff resistance can actually nullify the Asper's debuffs, especially that fear, I might be seriously considering this. Song and Trio are both low priority options that I want to level up for fun, but I'm really low on Skylight Scrolls and White Dragon Scales, so they will have to wait at least for one more round of campaign exclusive quest. All there's left are my Spark plans, which haven't really changed, still going for a second pain and suffering or harmonia while trying to make the best of the roulette discounts, and the anniversary pick ticket which is locked on to Halloween Florence. I doubt they're going to release a Christmas unit even more powerful and whatever will be released on New Year's and Valentine will not be available in it. So that's going to be it for me for the moment, really looking forward to the Arcarum stories and praying for the 5 pouring rounds. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and see you soon. Ciao!